Meg from Lincoln Square Pottery Studio and today we're going to be doing a trimming video. Trimming is shaping the pot from the bottom down, whereas throwing is shaping the clay from the bottom up. We're going to be trimming our piece after throwing um, and trimming is where you get a chance to sort of smooth out the bottom and the underside as well as it's a chance to sort of thin out your piece a little bit and make the wall thickness more even from top to bottom which will help prevent cracking. Now, um, before we get started on the actual trimming, I want to talk a little bit about the consistency that you want your piece to be. You want it to be firm enough that it, it doesn't wiggle around on you um, and it's not sticky anymore. But you don't want it so dry that uh, it, it, it's all hard and crumbly. Um, sometimes this texture, this, this state is called leather hard, but I actually like the phrase cheese hard. Think of like a nice cheddar. Or, uh, or Swiss, so not as, not as soft as a brie, not as dry as a Parmesan, cheddar, that's what we want. So our piece is in a good state right now and it's ready to be trimmed. And before I even get started on anything else, I need to figure out where I'm going to trim what. So what I like to do is I'll kind of, I'll feel the piece, take my fingers and sort of run it down the walls together like this so that um, as your fingers run down the walls, where, where you feel your fingers starting to spread apart from each other, that's where you want to mark because that lets you know that's where the walls are getting thick and that's where you, you're going to want to trim off some volume. So here, you know, here's the shoulder. I can feel my fingers traveling down to the belly and right about here is where the walls start to thicken up a little. And I'll make a little mark with my fingernail like that. So now I know where the wall gets thicker, here. And then I keep going, and I can feel the wall getting thicker. And I want to keep going down until I get to the bottom. And I can feel where my finger is at the bottom, on the inside of the floor of the vessel. And I'll make another mark, like that. So between this mark here and this mark here is where most of the trimming is going to happen. So now I'm ready to start getting the piece recentered onto the wheel head so I can start trimming. Now you'll notice that the wheel head has these uh, circles, concentric circles on the surface of it that can help you place your piece. And as long as you can line up one of those circles with the lip of your piece, you should usually be able to get it pretty close to centered. But sometimes the, those circles aren't easy to see. So another answer is to take a damp sponge and just make a wet ring and that's a little bit easier to see and then you'll know when you put it down like oh my lips a little closer to the wet circle on this side than it is on this side so you can scooch accordingly all right so once I've gotten it reasonably scooched I take my needle tool and I get the wheel spinning, eh, medium slowish speed, it doesn't have to be all that fast. And you can see there's a wobble. I want to get rid of that wobble before I start trimming. So what I do is I use my needle tool here, and I'm going to hold it like I'm pointing with it again, yeah? Brace my arm. And what I'm doing is I'm really, I'm just holding the needle tool steady. You see my arm is braced well against my leg so that I can hold it really, really steady without much effort on my part. And you can see the tip of the needle tool isn't pushing in to the piece. The piece is wobbling into where the needle tool is. So that way the needle tool will mark where the piece itself is off. Now once I've got that mark, you can see right here, from here to here, that means this piece needs to be moved away from that mark to make it more centered. So from here to here, from the center of the mark, I'm going to be pushing down at the lip, like that. See? It's just a small scooch. So next I'm going to check again, make sure and see if it's, if it's on center. And you can see, well, it's a lot better, but it's still a little bit off. So now I'm going to make a second mark, a little bit below, so that I can tell, again, where it's off this time. And this mark here 
starts all the way over here and goes all the way around to about here. So that means between here and here, I'm going to be scooching in that direction. So, one last test. Let's see if we've got it. Still a little bit off, but I think it's good enough. Basically, what I'm looking for when I'm looking for this is how centered it is between these two marks. Okay? And that's really the part that, that, I, that I care the most about. I'm trying to get down to this mark and have it be centered. So... If it's still a little bit off up here and a little bit off down here, that part doesn't bother me so much. It's the part where I'm actually going to be trimming down to that matters. Okay, so now remember, these are the marks. This is where the clay gets thick, here, and the clay goes into here. Okay, so it's between here and here where most of the trimming is going to happen. So this mark here shows where the floor is on the inside. So what I'm going to do is just sort of put a little circle there to help me remember where that is. And then this mark here is where things get thick. I'm just going to put a little mark there. Yeah. Now these two lines right here, they're just monomics. It's a way to remember. Um, they're not actually all that essential. But um, I find I trim a lot better when I know where I'm going. So I'm ready now that it's, uh, it's centered, it's ready to go. I need to tack it down so that once we get spinning, the piece doesn't go flying. All right, so to start, I need to grab a little bit of clay. And I'm going to make them into lunks, you know, just rough coils, really. And you want to take the lunk and you place it next to your piece, not on top, just right next to it. And then when you press down, press into the wheel head. If you press into the piece, you're going to move the piece, and you just spent all that time centering it, which really sucks. So I'm just squishing straight down, just like that, like so. You want at least, well, at least three lunks on there, usually, is what I'll go for. So I'm going to cut off some of the edge here, this wobbly edge, so that it's not, you know, banging my hands around. You'll want to hold the needle tool in your left hand like you're holding a pencil. This is the part that confuses people the most. Once you get over that part, it's not so bad. The, the reason that we're doing that has to do with the rotation of the clay, like this. You actually want to come at it from this side. Now, you can use your right finger to actually do the, the guiding, so to speak, but it is your left hand that's holding the needle tool. So notice, elbows are into the body, and that'll make the arm stronger and steadier. Coming down from the top, like that. All right. Once we've got that taken care of, we can get started. So the loop tool here, you want to hold um, in your hand with your pointer finger right on the flange, and that will help you be stronger um, and have the best leverage on it. Your left hand here is sort of gently sort of placed around the piece. You're not squeezing into the piece. You're just sort of holding steady. What this does is you can brace your right hand while you're at it, and also just in case things go horribly cattywampus. So we're ready to start getting trimming. And we're just going down from the top. That's what all that measuring was about. Now we know we can, we can take all this clay off very fearlessly. 
you can go from from bottom to top or top to bottom you see when you're taking off that volume right there you know you see how smoothly the the trimmings come off you know this is at a good moisture stage just the right one now how deep you go in has a lot to do with the angle that you hold your loopy tool at so if I wanted to be more shallow with it and do something that will just smooth off a little bit I'll hold it at a closer angle more parallel to the piece but if I want it to be sharper and take off more volume I'll hold my hand out a little bit so a little at a little bit of an angle from the piece Now, I like to make a foot when I'm doing this for several reasons. The foot is basically it's just a notch at the bottom, but it does sort of visually set off your piece. I like it anyway. And also, too, the foot acts nicely um, as a glaze catcher uh, later on, once we get to the glazing portion of all of this. Um, it will save you a lot of trouble you know you've already got a natural stopping point for glaze when you do that so we still have this little circle right here where we uh, marked where the floor is on the inside of the piece and um, this is a this is a good spot to take off some volume here so by reducing the thickness of the floor you're making the piece overall a little bit lighter it also means that you're reducing the amount of surface area of the piece that will touch your table or whatever um, and reduces the likelihood of it scratching up your table um, and it also will make it sit more level it's pretty easy you're just taking the loopy tool and you're starting off you can start off right at that ring if you want and just trim in towards the center like that And as long as, as long as this inner part here is lower than this part here, we'll be good to go. So once I've got all this finished and I've taken off whatever volume of clay I want to take off, I can certainly leave these trim marks here if I want. Lots of people like them. Um, they make all of these wonderful parallel lines. However, if you want to get rid of them, one way that works is you can use your pointy wooden stick. And you'll notice at the not on pointy side of your pointy wooden stick, there's a little swoopy part. Your finger fits perfectly in there. You can basically just burnish the surface of your piece. Aside from smoothing it out, I also find it reduces the, the, the likelihood of cracks. Not completely, but it, it does help. You can do it as well on your foot ring, which again, which will help reduce the likelihood of scratching up things that it comes in contact with. side as well.
The blade edge can also be used. Last thing is writing my name. And, um, you know, I'll usually put my name as well as the studio's initials and the year. But you don't need that much information. Okay, now I just take off the piece. And there it is. So you can see the, the silhouette is a lot more delicate down here now. Um, and also this part right in here, that's what I was talking when I said that would be sort of a speed bump for the glaze and it also finishes off the piece. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out more about the studio, you can find out all about us at comeplaywithplay.com.